Okay. You're still alive? That was not the right answer. You're still alive. Okay, great. As I mentioned, I'm Milan Gabor. Uh, I know that Gabor means cops in a bad way in Romanian, right? Yeah, yeah I know. So uh, I was developer once, now I'm a pen tester. I run a small camp, uh, pen testing company from Slovenia. I'm also besides Ljubljana founder. So if you're somewhere around April next year, somewhere close to Slovenia, you're more than welcome to join. And tell me, uh, I can tell you a little bit secret about the Dev Camp. You know, uh, has anybody been at the third Dev Camp? Third, 2012. I've been. And you know what? The Dev Camp was my first international conference as a presenter. I decided to go, you know, I decided to go to Romania, and if I fail, it's better to fail in Romania. <laughs> but you know what? After that, these are locations I presented all around, all around the world. So you see, it's possible. So it's also Dev Camp as a really good, good opportunity to start as a presenter. Okay, what's it gonna be agenda since I have uh, plenty of slides? And I have also live demos that probably will go wrong because I didn't pray to the demo gods yesterday, because yesterday I was still in Dublin doing presentations at noon. So just doing a presentation, running on a plane, getting here to present it here. Okay, we will shortly go through the hit devices, what kind of tools, what kind of scenarios, and you will see that there is a plenty of things going on. Okay, do I need to explain what hit device is? Probably no, but mostly we are talking, we, all devices, we really like to be keyboards. Why? Because with keyboards you can input some strings. But normally uh, it can be also mouses, game controllers, clickers. See this one, that everybody's using it? It's it can type. Now, it can not only click, it can type. I wanted to show you a demo, but the problem is with the clickers because they're kind of slow. Uh, so we won't be showing it, but trust me, this can type. It can type whatever you want. There are medical devices, and actually a hit device is any device that meets hit specification. So this is also one kind of the device which behaves as a keyboard. And if we go through the, a little bit back to the uh, future, uh, we've seen different kind of devices. This is from 2011, which is quite expensive, you know, which can be used as a keyboard. The second one, which is more, even more expensive, you know, so it looks like a cable, but it's not a cable. It's actually a hit device. If you have $200, uh, it's worth it. Then you have different devices which are really, really cheap, so like $3, $3 uh, and you can run scripts on it, but the problem is because they are not very, let's say, uh, well designed, so it's hard to stick them in a cable. It's really easy to weaponize it. With this, you own the machine, so you just run some kind of PowerShell, and that's it. So, then last year, uh, Luca Bongiorni created a really nice tool, which is Something like this, or actually it is this, you know, so it looks like USB key and it's not USB key. Actually, he managed to marry hit device and the Wi-Fi. So you don't have to be near, so you can just plug the USB key in and you can over the Wi-Fi send the commands. Uh, it's really nice built, it's a little bit about five, fifteen, fifteen dollars and it really works. Uh, for example, this one is weaponized in a manner, so if I stick this USB key into your computer, your Wi-Fi passwords that are stored in your Windows store, your Wi-Fi passwords goes with me. How? We will explain a little bit later. So this year, he created even more sophisticated tool because otherwise, uh, if you have uh, the Wi-Fi, you have to be near. This v, uh, v hit Elite, it, just, it was just released. It has a uh, GSM modem. So you can actually control it over the GSM networks. So you just plug it in, 
and you have the keyboard remotely accessed, so you might get some other ideas how to use it. What are the normal attack scenarios? Uh, probably just dropping USB sticks, you know, with the payloads, different kind of payloads, with the PowerShell. PowerShell, PowerShell is still today very popular. Or you can use some other tools to download malicious files like Certitil or Bitsadmin, which are found on every Windows machine. Or uh, this is not only a keyboard, because these devices have, can have multiple personalities. What does this mean? It can behave like a, a keyboard, like a mouse, a uh, um, thumb drive, or like a serial port. So with this one, you can actually extract over the serial port all files from the, from the desktop. And this one is actually using COM port to exfiltrate the Wi-Fi passwords. As I said, we, have, we hit, actually, you need to be close for the Wi-Fi limits. Okay, then we had in 2016, I don't know, who remembers most, Jack? Okay, one, two, three. You know, every big issues, they have kind of, they get kind of logo of uh, issues. You know? And what we found out that still, since 2016, there is a tool called Jacket, so you can actually inject yourself into non-secured, non-encrypted communication between the dongle and the mouse. And there is still huge number of devices that are actually still vulnerable to this. Why we will get a little bit later why is this is still so. So how was weather here in Romania? How was summer? Hot. hot. Okay, it's what's not hot only here, but also uh, regarding the CVEs. Does somebody recognize those CVEs? Yes? All of them? Anybody else? We have one guy who is recognized what these CVEs are. But let me try to put, rephrase the, my question. I guess you know this company. OK? You know that company, right? Who's using Logitech products? Not anymore. Not anymore, yeah. And the biggest problem was this, you know, the Logitech with this little orange, yellow, orange sign, you know, like unifying, unifying connector so you can connect to one or one receiver, multiple, multiple devices. So uh, these CVEs are actually, all CVEs are connected with Logitech issues. So as you've seen, the first one is AES key sniffing from pairing. So what does this mean? So if somebody listens, and it's actually close to you when you are pairing your device, he can get the AIS key. And he, what does this mean? He can actually intercept and modify or send uh, or uh, decrypt if it's a keyboard, actually decrypt all the communication between your, key, your keyboard uh, <clears throat> and your computer. Uh, possibility to injection keys dumped from USB from presentation clickers. So from this kind of devices. Majority of them, they are still vulnerable, you know, so uh, because uh, when is the last time you updated firmware on your, on your receiver, on your disk? When was the last time you updated firmware here? Huh? The guy stopped using it. You know, that was the, maybe the best, best solution. And also, they found some other issues like key dump. So the problem is also with this, this little bit, this device. If somebody gets your hands on it and it's still vulnerable, he can dump your keys. So it just plugs in, dumps the keys, put it back in, and all in, you, know, you lose all encryption between your, key, between your keyboard and your computer. OK, this, what I'm going to show you next, this is not our research. For the last three, three visits to Dev Camp, we were showing our research. But this is the actually research uh, that was doing, done by others. But we, let's say, contrib contributed a little bit. Uh, first of all, they have been two different kind of, uh, let's say, researchers who were researching in the same area. The first one they presented in June at uh, Confidence in Poland. And they presented also again on October 29 at Heklu. So if you want to see what's actually, they are going into little, real technical details about it. You can see the, the, the presentation, it's all online already. 
but we will be talking about this guy who actually made really, really, let's say, great software. Uh, I don't know who is using PoundPy. PoundPy? You're not Marcus, right? Uh, I would like to be, but not. You would like to be, yes, but not. Okay, he's a really great researcher and great person with some really crazy, crazy ideas. And he also proposed for the Black Hat talk, but uh, he was rejected. And I really uh, think that was a big mistake from the Black Hat committee because uh, he would have really something, uh, some really nice things to show. And uh, after that, you know, when we started uh, talking with him, he said, like, I, since this is a big issue, because almost everybody is using uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, uh, uh, and Logitech, uh, Logitech devices. You know, he really wanted to draw attention, security community, and make customers aware. So he said, like, here, you know, have it, play with it, and go and talk about it, because he cannot go to all the conferences around the world. So he's actually the author of Logitacker. So it's kind of not only a software, it's kind of combination. It's a hardware tool to enumerate. So it's actually his software. It's running on, hmm, let me see if I can plug. It's on, on this one. You know? With the mouse jack before, we had to have program running on our computer and using like Nordic, our Nordic uh, hardware to, uh, to be able to inject ourselves. But with this one, Everything is combined, so the software is actually running here. So you only need to have like, uh, I don't know, a putty or a screen connecting to it, and you can have uh, everything running here. So you don't have to need, you don't have to install any additional uh, software on your machine. There is plenty of Logitech features which are uh, which are available from discovering. So you're going to see when I'm going to be running it live, you're going to see that. Uh, because this device has antenna, so you will see probably somewhere also, uh, as we measured from 30 to 50 meters. So if somebody is using mouse somewhere there, you still get the packets. So you can still in, uh, listen or inject yourself into it. So you have the key pairing, so you can sniff for the key pairs, you get the AAS key. Uh, you can save it, you can, save this, you can write the scripts, uh, it's really, it's really awesome, and you have the releases for different kind of devices uh, on his GitHub. If you want to play with it, there are four different boards that supports uh, Logitecker. The first one, it's Nordic, which costs uh, about thirty, thirty dollars, but it's really nice because you can, you know, you can stuck it because it's really designed. You can stuck it in like USB key, you know, which looks like this. You know, I took this from one of the Slovenian conferences, you know, uh, took it apart and put it in uh, this uh, Nordic, uh, Nordic board. Then you have Maker Diary, di two different dongles. One is with the possibility of external antenna, and I uh, will be playing with this April Brother dongle, which is, uh, let's say, less expensive, but it's the uh, quality is so-so. From uh, five or four purchases, uh, only one is working. Uh, working now at the moment. So these are the hardware. So if you, uh, let's say, if you spot that somebody is using kind of uh, antennas, something like this, you know, it might be getting real, real suspicious, which means like there, like here, but you can get really, really long range. So as I said, from 30 to 50 meters, what does this mean? If you manage, uh, let's say, to get to the close to the some uh, potential, uh, I don't know, company that you're attacking, of course, with, uh, uh, with authorization to do it so, you can get it from the parking lot, uh, let's say, uh, the traffic that is going on, uh, that is going through. With these two boards, they don't have antenna, so they're limit, they're kind of limited. So if you're in the same room, then this would be probably possible. Um, has anybody been walking through the CTF arena? Did anybody check? Did they have uh, Logitech mouses on it? You might get crazy ideas. You know, if you're some other team, you know, you might be messing with their inputs, you know, and typing and stuff. And I checked. There are some Logitech mouses uh, used there, and I don't know. I'm, I didn't check if their uh, firmware is updated. 
And there is a third device, a little bit bigger, but it also has possibility to external antenna. Uh, also, this, these devices, they are not only one device. It's actually, let's say, a combination of four devices. One is used for, as a serial port. The other one is used, well, it can be used as a mouse. So you can actually replay. What does this mean? So if somebody, if you manage to get the keys or he's using, uh, let's say, non-encrypted communication, and he's, let's say, you transfer, you, uh, uh, you sniff their, uh, let's say, mouse movement, actually your mouse moves. So as he moves, your mouse moves. And the same with the keyboard. So everything that he's typing on his keyboard, and you can listen to it, you can get all the, uh, uh, keyboard that are pressing. And also definitely the raw devices, so everything that is getting, and this is the raw device that we used, so we can actually decode. We managed to write some tools for Windows that can actually store and manage the, the key logger. So Logitech or Dex actually covers these uh, different kind of vulnerabilities. Uh, the old one that's are from 2016, this is plain injection, so if there is no encryption, who knows if your mouses are using some kind of encryption. Who can, let's say, say that my mouse uses encryption? What? Your? <laughs> Why? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody sticks USB sniffer, then it's a problem. But yes, yeah, it's counts definitely. And I've seen a lot of. Uh, wide mouses at the CTF area. So I guess they know why, but. Uh, and there are some other uh, vulnerabilities that's actually Logitech uh, covers. Okay, since I have only 30 minutes, you know, I've been running really fast and I don't want to be late, let's go to the demo. So as I said, we have here this device that's actually dongle updated with, uh, with uh, uh, Marcus uh, firmware. And now, if we try, try to see what's actually going on, let's see if this connects. So now there is, uh, it looks like you turn off all your mice, mice. So, because there is no, no traffic. You know, but as I, see, as I move my mouse, oh, you don't see anything. Almost. Yeah, change the font, it will take a long, but uh, let me see if I can do, I can do this better, a little bit, let's see this. But you see, as I move my mouse, you see that uh, it's actually sniffing. So if the guy from the video, you have also wireless mouse? No, no? too bad. Wireless mouse, no, on the court? We will probably see. Uh, I've been sitting in a, um, near the CTF, there is a plenty of movement there. So as you see, we have seen all the uh, devices. And how many devices we see here? It's only the, oh, let's say, look, halt, devices. So we see here that we have somewhere near here about four devices. One is mine. Uh, how do I know? Because I already uh, was playing before. And I see you see that I already have the key. So I can, let's say, inject or listen to, to um, to everything that uh, my, my uh, mouse is doing. Okay, so that's the first, but we can definitely store this, you see devices, we can store it, and we are storing this on this device. So if you plug it to some other computer, you will have the same, same keys and same uh, devices and same scripts, because you can also write the script. So if you, uh, you can write a script, if some device is found, you can actually start uh, poking around with it. Okay, now let's try to inject ourselves into the communication. Um, one short question, what do you think in this type? How do you type this, how do you type A on your keyboard, on your machine with this? Hmm? Left click, right click, but can somebody try? Okay, I have a virtual machine here. Let's do it a challenge, let's do a challenge. Let's do a challenge. Okay, you see? This dongle is connected to here, so to this virtual machine. So see, it's only running here. So how, challenge for you, how can you type A with that? Draw it, draw it, yeah, but no, really. Using? 
Virtual Cree keyboard, yeah. You can try? You have five seconds to use it. OK, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, you cannot do it, you know. But let me try. Let me get my mouse back. I lost on one already at the sum presentation, so. Let's try uh, with simple. Let's try with simple, uh, let's say, a script load. So this is kind of script that's actually saved already here. Uh, I will uh, load it. I will select a target, and I will try to execute this, uh, this script. I can show you later what's actually doing. But let's see. See, mouse is actually active here. So in this area, that mouse is connected over the VMware with virtual. Yeah, let's see if this one will be working since the uh, live demos normally don't go real well. But let's see if this one will write something to, to that uh, screen. So as you've seen, I don't have a keyboard in, but I have a mouse inside. So it was written. So actually, this mouse can write if you have the decryption key or if you have no encryption between your mouse and your receiver. Um, OK, hello, DevCamp. It's quite good. But can we do some really bad stuff? Yes, what kind of bad stuff? PowerShell. PowerShell, some other, yeah. Why? Because if I own keyboard, I own your computer. And I, if I own co your computer, I own your digital identity. And I, everything that I do, even if I'm sitting in some other room, I'm actually doing in your, uh, let's say, in your uh, digital identity. I try with some other, but uh, let's see. Probably this one would be also very interesting. Um, let's see if this one gets through. OK. Why it's waiting? Because I said delay for several seconds. You see, it was running, yeah, and we got the web page. Probably we can run the PowerShell or download something or something like this. See, okay. The other thing that we can do is, I, I, I was also, you know, my intention was to show that also this one can click. Uh, well, these uh, remote clickers are a little bit limited because they cannot send uh, normal characters. They are limited to send only, uh, I think, four or six different characters to the unifying dongle. But there is a trick. Who's using Windows? OK, who's using Mac? You're si safe. Who's using Linux? Cool, you're also safe. Why? Because I don't know if you remember, how would you write if your A is not working? So letter A on keyboard stuck, or it's not working. How would you write A, but not with, not with a handwriting? No. Okay, virtual without virtual keyboard. I, yeah, ASCII, ASCII, Alt and on a numerical keyboard, Alt zero six five. Some of them still remember, and that's the trick. So with the alternatives, you can write with this also, because alt and other stuff, other uh, numerical, can write this. So that was the trick. So if you're going to try, you, you will be playing with a Logitecher, you have to use alternative string, because otherwise it will not work. OK, I have uh, this video. I actually uh, uh, sniff. I saved. Uh, I made a small video because uh, I probably uh, uh, would fail something because now uh, this one, you see, the unifying dongle doesn't have any device. And when we are pairing, if somebody is listening, uh, he can also see that he gets the pairing key. So device, you see, it was paired. And if you're listening to that pairing uh, process, uh, and because of the issues that had uh, Logitech products, you can actually get the, the key. And if you get the key, you can get decrypt all the communication. And you're going to see that uh, I will be typing something in our dev camp uh, rules. But the problem is that we get two. Uh, two. Uh, if you press one, uh, one letter, we get the two letters. Why? Because, uh, I, as I said, uh, I uh, 
uh, enabled a, a passive enumeration. So everything that I'm typing here, it's actually uh, sniffed and repeated again. So that's uh, sniffing. So when you're pairing, uh, go to Faraday cage. So nobody is listening about and nobody, is pos nobody has possibility to steal the keys. Uh, additional tool that uh, Marcus released was Munifying tool. Uh, it looks like he likes Golang, so compile it on Linux because it's used libs-usb and uh, actually can dump. Uh, it actually can dump the keys from these dongles. So that's why, as I said, also if you know your keyboard is connected over this dongle, keep this dongle secure. Uh, what is our contribution when we have been playing? Because we have been, uh, let's say, we had, we had an honor to be part of the private repos before going to public. Uh, we had some summer school students during this summer. And he made a little bit tool, not on the Linux, on the Windows. And after that, uh, Marcus created a new version that can be easily, uh, let's say, changed. But still, we have, uh, let's say, some good, good scenarios scenario for that, uh, and uh, this uh, tool looks like this. So in everything that is pressed, of course, you need a decryption key. Uh, it's actually displayed also here. But with another addition, this tool can save all the communication. So all the, all the, all the communication through the uh, log attacker into a file. And you, if you manage to get the key later, it can decrypt everything that somebody was typing on. So for example, if I sniff your keyboard, I don't, have the, I don't need to have the encryption key now at this moment. I can save all the communication. After, I don't know, days, months, or years, when I get the encryption key, I can decrypt all the communication, all the communication between your keyboard and your Machine. So this is actually our contribution. If somebody wants to play, it's actually published on uh, GitHub. Okay. When we have been playing, you know, Logitech also keeps very uh, updated version. So this one is from 2014. So probably it has some also some kind of other issues. And uh, ah, I've been almost on time. I'm still on time. Okay. Nobody's trying to get me off the stage. OK, let's get some crazy ideas about uh, what can we do about it. Probably hit devices can be used for different purposes. And also Logitech, uh, these devices can be used. For example, something like this. Now it's going to be Christmas. Yeah. So if somebody wants to give some really nice plasma ball to somebody, he can weaponize it with some hit device that can type, so it can be typing on his computer. Or if you have really good business partners, you know, you can send them weaponized mouses. Why? Because every mouse has little USB hub inside, and you just have to connect to that USB. See here, uh, it's actually weaponized uh, hit device, and this is normal mouse. So if you take it apart, weaponize it, pack it back, send it, probably this, this mouse can also type. So uh, There are some other, uh, after Marcus was uh, doing this, there were some other crazy ideas, uh, like for, from Luca. You know, he can actually change this kind of cable. So probably if you see this cable on a, on a table, what would you see? What would you tell? It's normal what? Normal charger, right? But it's with some addition, because here, you can actually put in the Logitech receiver that you can buy on uh, eBay for like three dollars, and uh, you have the control of that uh, have the control of that uh, uh, receiver, and you can actually again type on somebody else's computer while you're charging, which is not completely true. Why? Because if you're charging, you're taking all the power, and the hit device doesn't work. So it's a little bit drawback. And there were some other things, you know, that's, I don't know if somebody understands Slovenian. You know, one guy was asking me when we have been putting this on a Twitter, what should we do about the Logitech? Should we just throw all, uh, all devices into trash? Well, almost, 
Yeah, because uh, Luca also said that log attacker with USB SAMRA cable plus, plus air gaps bypass, you can actually own all systems. So nuclear plants, power grids. So probably this is one good thing also for Jason Street to, for his next adventure. And some other crazy ideas. You know, uh, at the same time when this was going on, Logitech UK, so Logitech G, so this kind of gamers edition. So gamer mouses like a, uh, model G502. You know, there were uh, young gamers showing how they cut their uh, Logitech uh, cords, you know, and saying, we want to switch to the Wi-Fi mouses. Now, that's not a good idea. Why? Because if you try to do this with uh, G52 unifying, uh, unifying dongle, it's even faster, so you can type faster. So the connection speed is faster because the gamers need speed. You know? So can you imagine running this on LAN party and injecting somewhere, you know, if you have like, I don't know, in Slovenia we had like 400 people coming to the LAN party. And you know, you're just injecting into you know uh, owning their computers. It could be really, really fun. Or, as I mentioned already before, if somebody at the CTF, you know, you might have some, let's say, uh, not friendly other teams that could actually you know, play with some uh, play with some communication. And some people, for example, this one, Philip Cran, he is actually working for uh, Elasticsearch. You know, some of them that are really going on through the presentation take it seriously. And if you own some, let's say, clicker or uh, uh, some other device, actually Logitech will replace it to you free of charge if you, if you send it. So it's not that bad. Can you imagine at some big conference like here, you know, and playing with somebody's clicker? I know when I was... Uh, uh, the presenter before me, you know, explaining what I'm going to do, he said, like, please don't play with my clicker. Please don't play with my clicker. You know? So I was not. I was, you know, I was what? So what are the solutions? What are the mitigations? So definitely we cannot disable USB, right? Because with USB, it, they are coming also the, you know, the unifying, uh, unifying receivers. You know, uh, probably the best way should be update your dongle. You know, the only problem is if you're running some, uh, I don't know, Windows, it's, they are not updated automatically. You have to go, you have to download the firmware, you have to update it. Or, as I do, you can use Bluetooth mouse. That's also a solution. But we have seen, you know, this year also Bluetooth had issues. So it's also a fun part. So the corded mouse, it's definitely uh, maybe the best solution. Of course, one. So if you're in some kind of enterprise, high emission critical area, definitely you need kind of uh, device management to know what was being inserted into. Probably there is also very, um, let's say, a uh, lot of uh, place for improvement also regarding the digital forensic. So how do you know if I plugged in the unified dongle that I don't need extra permission for it? And maybe the best one is, so you just need to secure your dongle. So does this mean you have to lock it or you never leave it out of your sights? So, and as a, the last slide, you know, as you have seen, you know, the hit devices, you know, uh, let's make them great again. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for an awesome presentation. Now, are there any questions? Sure. Pick one. The one for is, uh, is logic tech uh, working because I was thinking about uh, software defined radio. Sorry, what? I was thinking about software defined radio. Yeah. Uh, on what frequencies? Uh, this is uh, 2.4 gigs of Wi Fi. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, regarding the Logitech, you know, sometimes also the big companies screw up. They issue a patch, but the problem was they uh, made a wrong patch. So actually, you can they fix the thing that you cannot uh, you cannot uh, dump the uh, keys from the transceivers. But there was a trick. Oops, there was a trick. You can actually downgrade the firmware on your dongle, and the keys still stay 
there on the dongle and then just uh, uh, dump the keys and upgrade it again. So uh, there's a question here on the left. Yeah, here. Uh, are there uh, any public incidents in which uh, this kind of vulnerability has been exploited? Uh, um, because uh, in, during an uh, awareness uh, program, uh, it will be a good idea to, to use uh, yes. real-life examples. Uh, I'm not aware, but when I showed this to one of the ministries in Slovenia, they all took, uh, of these ministers, they all took Wi-Fi mouses from them. And they put them on a uh, cabled mouses, so corded okay, mouses. Okay, it's just. But we have vision. not been aware because it's really hard because it doesn't leave so much traces. So because these dongles, you can you you're plugging them in, you're plugging it out. So if you have don't if you don't have some really good digital forensics or uh, logging mechanism, you don't even know. So, but I'm not aware. But probably, uh, let's say adversaries are probably doing this okay. on a large scale. Thanks. All right. Questions from the right? Uh, okay. First of all, really nice presentation. Um, second of all, regarding that tweet, well, the two tweets that you showed with the person that got an upgraded Logitech yeah. like clicker, um, is that person aware of the fact that that Logitech clicker might, might also be vulnerable? Because I'm asking because I tested the whole Logitech yeah. thingy. Yeah. I'm well aware. And uh, right now, basically, Logitech devices that are still sold are still vulnerable to these uh, things. I, I don't know. I know Philip in person, so I will ask him next time. I'll try to get his uh, presenter. But uh, as he got the information from the Logitech, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, Logitech, OpenMessage, really secure again. We don't know. But it might be that, uh, you know, in some cases, it still will be some kind of issues. But at the moment, Marcus is playing with different things, so he's occupied with another crazy idea. So if you follow him on Twitter, uh, you will be up to date with hit devices. So, But uh, uh, follow me on Twitter. I will ask Mark, uh, I will ask uh, Philip next, uh, next meetup. Yeah. OK, thank you. And the question from the left. We had the microphone here. OK. Uh, hi. It would not be possible for Logitech or for uh, any other vendor to implement some kind of uh, perfect for row secrecy. Because, uh, I mean, even if uh, the encryption algorithm is good and uh, they don't find any vulnerabilities, they still yeah. can sniff my traffic. And, uh, I mean, a keyboard, for instance, yeah. is something uh, typically people give little to no value. So uh, if I type something uh, that I don't want to share, people can sniff it and then come back later, take my uh, keyboard, smash it, look on the chip or something like that, and read the key. And that's not good, I think. Yeah, um, here the AES is, when it's, uh, the communication is encrypted, it's encrypted with AES. So AES is kind of okay, right? Okay. But the problem is with key interchange, how to, uh, how to uh, uh, this. Well, um, there are some limitations for that. You have to be close. You know, when you're pairing the, your mouse or your keyboard, somebody needs to be close to you. Or maybe some cleaning lady would, uh, let's say, if uh, the mouse or the keyboard is already paired, she can unpair everything and force you to pair it again. And sometimes, you know, there are kind of different kind of scenarios. That's why, that's why he said this is really huge issue. You know, this is really huge issue. And if you got the keys and if you're let's say, recording what everything somebody is typing. So let's, uh, some CEO typing on his computer, you know, you just record all the keystrokes, and then at some time you get the key for that decryption. And when you get the key, you get the all history, what he was typing. So also the usernames and passwords. So that's why you need to also, these small devices, you need to keep them secure. So, but good question. All right, let's take another one. Left, right? Go on. On the right. Um, one of the things we tend to rely on is Active Directory and no admin rights. So you can hack my information, but you're getting that user's information alone. You're not having admin rights. You can't run anything on PowerShell. Isn't that a level of security that you can... I know it's not 100% reliable, but at least somehow reliable, isn't it? Uh, what do you mean exactly? If you're not... If you're so, 
if your PowerShell is disabled. Yeah, PowerShell is disabled on the computer. Yeah. You don't have admin rights. So even if you were to well, send any the, commands. Yeah, but the dongles you don't need to administrate, right? Because they're installed automatically. So you don't yes. need for that. But anyway, uh, and if I manage somehow to get into the communication between your keyboard and your machine, then this machine is mine. And your digital identity is mine. So I don't need, sometimes, I don't need even the administrator rights on that machine or some privileged user in an active domain because I can sniff whatever you type. Or I can open some other pro programs, not necessarily the PowerShell. But PowerShell can be run in different kind of ways, not only the PowerShell. Remember that. So even if you delete PowerShell.exe, there's actually the, all uh, the what is called the uh, automation somewhere behind, so you don't need. So. But you're welcome. All right, so I think we have time for one last question. There was a gentleman here gesturing. Do you still want to ask your question? OK, the last uh, question. This is a territory which I didn't explore, this hide uh, vulnerability. I want to ask uh, everything you, you showed us today was about Logitech. Yes. And uh, there are uh, other devices. Uh, uh, and yes. these tools can be used on the on uh, mouse, Microsoft mouses, for example? Uh, we have seen, uh, I don't know if you can hear, see it here, but let me see to do my little magic with this. Uh, uh, from 2016, not only uh, the devices that have been using no encryption at all, so you have the Microsoft, you have the Dell, you have the IBM, you have... Uh, 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 Amazon mouses, they are not using encryption at all. So you can easily inject yourself into this non-encrypting communication. And that mouses that are not, uh, let's say, updated or fixed yet, they are still can be used as a plain as a keyboard. So there are some also some other vendors. But these Logitech are, uh, actually only handles the Logitech issues that have been okay, discovered. So there are tools for these ones, yes, for these yes. models. Yeah, and these ones are... Uh, let's say for 2016, so three years old, and they still haven't patched it. Great. Yep. Can you add uh, on thank you page, mulțumesc, this is a Romanian thank you. <laughs> Which? What? <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you page, thank you. All Is right. it in Romania also? And, and, and in, on, this, uh, on this note, we would like to express thank you in any language of your choosing. Okay, Whichever thank you very much. You best.